Hello, humany viewers. I'm here with my dad. At night, we are at Grizzly Peak above Berkeley. So those are the lights of Berkeley. And the reason we're here is because, well, I don't think the iPhone camera, oh, it can barely pick it up. The reason we're here is because as of today, December 21st, 2020, Jupiter and Saturn are very close in the night sky. I think it's called a conjunction and they're only 0.1 degrees away from each other. So it looks like it's a single bright star on the iPhone camera. I'm zooming into it right now. But looking through my binoculars, you can actually see there's, there's two, two points. The one on the right is Saturn and it's dimmer, but the iPhone camera can't pick it up. But I just figured I'd, I'd make a video about it just to document that I was here. Um, also today, December 21st is, is the winter solstice. So longest night, shortest day. Yeah, so lots of cool astronomical events are happening. I'm looking through the binoculars right now. Um, Can you take a cell phone through the binoculars? I thought about that, mm -hmm. um, but it's like- I've done that, but you need it very steady. So many things need to line up just right. Yeah, we could go to the car and put it on the Oh seat. yeah, that's a good idea. I think we'll try that later. Also, um, here's, just, here's a fun fact. So there's, a, there's the moon up there, it's about a half moon right now. The moon is about 0.5 degrees of the sky. So for context, Jupiter and Saturn right now are about one-fifth of the moon's diameter apart. So first of all, just look how pretty this view of Oakland is with the lights. Oh, I can't focus that well. Is it too far away? Oh, but there's the Bay Bridge, and you can even see the reflection of the lights on the water of the bay. It doesn't look super good. It doesn't look super good on the iPhone cam camera, but it looks a lot more colorful and bright in real life. That's all I can really promise you. There's so many cars going by, so it's frustrating. Where's the eye hole? The eye hole's right there. The camera's right here. Oh, this is hard. You know, one thing nice about the binoculars is that you could look through the other eye, one of the eyes. Oh, good point. And if, if one eye can see it, the other eye, I yeah. probably can yeah. too, right? Okay, so I know I definitely got Jupiter and Saturn uh, viewable through the binoculars on my iPhone before, but it wasn't recording. So I'm gonna try it again and just record the whole thing through a video. And then if I ever hit it once, I'll have a snapshot. So the first thing I gotta do is just find it through the binoculars. Uh, okay, I found it. Now I gotta slowly bend down and then rest the binoculars on the car so that I have a little more stabilization. This has it's in the shot in my right eye, so now I'm going to hold the phone over the left eye. And if the two eyes are pointing in the same direction, which they should be... <gasps> there it is, there it is. Uh, there, focus. Focus, focus. There, do you see those two, two points? I'm trying to hold it as stably as possible, but the one on the left... Oh, uh, that's Jupiter. The one on the right is Saturn. Saturn is about twice as far away from the sun as Jupiter, that's why it's dimmer. It's also like 70% of the size. But yeah, oh wow, that's actually pretty clear. Through binoculars into an iPhone camera. I'm proud of that. And like the smallest twitch of the binoculars like changes the location of the points so much. But yeah, too bad the moons aren't visible at all. So Io, Europa, Callisto, Ganymede and Titan. I can't see any of them, but that's just because the planets are so much larger, I bet. Okay, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. So this is the binocular setup that my dad was recommending that I do, where I'm resting the binoculars on the edge of the roof of our car, just to add a little bit of stabilization so that when my hand inevitably shakes, 
I don't lose focus of the target I'm looking at, which are the two planets, Jupiter and Saturn. Also, the binoculars have a magnification of about 10 times, which is not too extreme, and means that I can still just move it around with my hands. And you can also see the city of Oakland in the background. Now, in this photo, you can see my dad doing that exact tactic, using the roof of the car for stabilization. And he's also wearing a mask because we're still in a COVID-19 pandemic, and most other cars were like over 15 feet away, so we're still social distancing. Now, this photo shows the same exact action or phenomenon, but from a different angle, from behind. So we can see both the observer and the observee, the observee being the point of light in the background that's not actually a star, but two planets. Now this photo I took with my iPhone 10 camera and really happy with it because I was anticipating that I have to take multiple photos of different zoom levels to both capture the whole context of the whole city and the fine tuned details of the star. But this one photo actually includes everything because we see the whole city of Oakland and San Francisco and the bay on the bottom for context to see how big things are. But then there's actually enough pixels in the photograph itself so that if we slowly zoom in to my other surprise, you can actually start to make out the two different planets. So Jupiter is the brighter one on the left and Saturn is the dimmer one on the right. But I was thinking that because the iPhone camera isn't the best, it's not, you know, state of the art bleeding edge camera technology, I would have to take multiple photos. But this is the same exact photo, just more zoomed in. And you can see two dots so clearly delineated that you can actually see a dark band of pixels in between them. So this photo is really all I need. So if I wanted to prove to friends that I could actually see this entirely, I only need to send them one photo. I don't need to send them an album of multiple photos. This this one covers it all. You see a bright dot and a dim dot. Makes sense because Jupiter is something like five, ten times brighter than Saturn. So I think everything is corroborating here. And thank you for watching this video. And I'm glad I got to see the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, which isn't going to happen for another 800 years, or at least not as closely. And I'm going to stop talking now because um, I'm talking too much and too loudly. And I'm going to see you all later. Bye. P.S. I just had another thought. Do you see in this photo how there's a tower with dim red lights that's standing on the horizon of the cityscape directly below Jupiter and Saturn, like it's directly downward from that point of light. Um, and it sort of looks like just two dim red dots. Well, that tower is actually a very famous tower in San Francisco called the Sutro Tower, which I'm showing you right now. And I just think that it was such a crazy coincidence that out of all the vantage points my dad and I could have picked, we picked the one that by coincidence had the tower essentially pointing to the conjunction. The other thing I wanted to say is that even though today was the most um, significant day to look at the conjunction, I'm pretty sure tomorrow, if you still wanted to look at it, you could, but they'll just be slightly further apart because the planets are constantly moving. So whereas today they were only 0.1 degrees apart, tomorrow they might be like 0.2 degrees. And so it's still very noticeable and very um, interesting.